Hi hey guys, and instead of discussion today, um, I'm doing this video uh, just because so many people are off pace and I am worried about you getting work done. And so today I want to make sure that I um, connect with each student and uh, make a plan to figure out how to help you to get on pace. Uh, so shout out to the people who are on pace. And in this video, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the last two chapters. Um, there are discussion questions that you can answer on your own in your packet to earn the must-do points. Um, and, or you can take notes uh, from the following in your 5.7 uh, must do. I don't really care. Just getting some notes down is all I'm going to ask for. Okay, so Plot and Characters Chapter 7. This is the visit to the old house with Melanie. That's the current episode. It begins with Benji deciding to leave his parents' house when they're fighting. We have several flashbacks in this section as well, including Elena. Now, Elena has is the big sister, right? And she has finally come to Long Island, not to Benji's house though, and it's still a flashback. It's not actually the current episode, um, but it's a recent flashback. It's just happened recently, and she is in Southampton with a boyfriend, obviously trying to avoid her family, but is pleased to see Benji and offers him some advice. Um, so we are in the main episode at uh, Benji's house, right? And then he leaves and eventually runs into Melanie and he takes her to the old house. This is the house that he considers to be the house of his childhood. All right, so let's take a look at some of these tips on plot and character. Um, first of all, um, it focuses on the end of summer and some changes in Sag Harbor and in Benji, including he gets his braces off finally. Um, he's used to sticking around his parents' house when they argue. This time he actually leaves. Um, and then um, we um, also get to see, uh, oh, there's also this big deal. He kisses a girl, and that's Melanie, right? Um, we meet Elena. We see her in a recent flashback. It's the week before Benji gets his braces off. This should say his. My bad. And um, that's on pages 283 to 285. And one of my discussion questions today is, what do you make of Elena? What kind of a big sister role model is she? She offers Benji some advice on um, page 285 that's really important. And he seems like he doesn't really understand where she's coming from, which is unusual, I think. At least it, I was surprised to, to hear him say, oh, I didn't know what, he, what she was talking about. Um, so you'll have to let me know what you think on that one. We do meet Melanie in this section. There are a couple of flashbacks involving Melanie. One where um, she calls Benji when Benji is hanging out at a different house with her current boyfriend, Nick, and she asks to speak to Benji. And so that was kind of unusual. And then another time where she kind of rolls her eyes at Benji in response to something her current boyfriend, Nick, does. And then we see her IRL. He runs into her after leaving his house. Um, how about uh, these characters? Clive is gone. He is at a um, basketball camp. Bobby is in the city. His grandfather is not doing well. And so Ben, she doesn't know if he's going to be back or not. And he might be done for the city. Randy's working double shifts to try to pay for college. And so he's sort of solitary. He doesn't have a whole lot of people to hang out with at this point. Um, chapter eight is the Sag Hills, uh, the Sag Harbor Hills Labor Day party. So Labor Day is the last of summer, right? We usually start school the day after Labor Day. And it sounds like he's going to be starting school a week after Labor Day. But this is sort of the last hurrah of the summer. Um, Benji does a lot of reflecting in this chapter um, on his summer. And then he also is starting to plan for the next year. He's going to be 16 in November and he has big plans. He's going to get combat boots and some new albums so that he can um, be cooler this year. 
Um, in chapter eight, we meet N Mr. Nickerson, not a big deal, except that he has the bonfire that ends uh, the chapter. Um, and that's where we see Barry David, who is quite the character, right? I like this quote on 326 about him. He's the ghost kid who was all of us and none, everybody's cousin and no one's. Um, and then he talks about, Benji talks about how they should have stopped him from stealing lawn furniture and throwing them into the untended bonfire, um, but nobody does. It was hard to resist the pleasure of watching someone F up so colossally. And so they just let him have at it. Um, for theme in chapter seven, um, coming of the age in the margins, I think, uh, connects a lot to the feeling that the LNG effect, the feeling that WLNG, the, ra the cheesy radio station provides, which is a feeling of nostalgia for something that never existed. So nostalgia is when you're thinking back on something that happened and you're missing it, right? But this takes it a step farther because it's not something that you're missing. It's something that you never actually experienced. And so it's kind of a trick of the imagination because you're, you're wanting something back that you never had to begin with. And I think this is a common human phenomenon. I think we do this all the time. We idealize the past or certain things about our lives and wish we had them back. And not, not, we don't really realize that when we had them, they weren't so great to begin with. Um, and, um, this is one of my favorite lines from this section about Benji being in the margins, right? A constant state of being, he's talking about getting his braces off. Um, oh, this is another good one. What kind of a chump forgot being a five-year-old Mac? Melanie says, hey, do you remember when we kissed when we were five? And he's like, what? <laughs> he doesn't even remember it. Um, but then he does some really introspective thinking in this section, and it's inspired by the cheesy song that he is reminded of. And um, he keeps trying to figure out what is it about this song that is making me um, so nostalgic? What am I remembering? What am I feeling? And part of it is he thinks it is reminding him of his old house where all the good things still lived even though we had moved on. Everything as it was, even the boy, the one who always seemed happy. Melanie tells him, you always used to be happy. What happened to you? And so he's thinking about this old house when he used to be happy. Um, he also thinks about the song gifting him with a scene of a perfect day so long ago when we were all together. Um, but he realizes that he is nostalgic about everything. It could be nothing important. He's still going to be nostalgic for it. Um, he's even looking forward to being nostalgic <laughs> about things in the future that he's experiencing now. Um, here he um, is talking about in chapter eight how a lot had happened over the summer. Uh, he's listing off all the different things that have happened um, in sort of a stream of consciousness way. And um, then he's thinking about what he's going to change for his year 16, right? And I think we're reminded that, yeah, maybe some things did happen, but in a lot of ways, not a whole lot happened either. And in many ways, Benji is where he was at the beginning of the book, wanting to change who he is and not really being sure how to do it and um, probably not equipped to follow through on his plans. Um, the last one here, the generations replacing and replenishing each other. This is when he is noticing there are people who are like him that are younger. And so there also must be people that are like him there at the party, the Labor Day party, who are older than he is, but he can't quite spot them. Every summer, the shifting over took place in small degrees as you moved closer to the person who was waiting for you to catch up and some younger version of yourself elbowed you out of the way. The next section, narrative as a quest for understanding. I think the narrative in this section, and probably in the last, is song lyrics. And that's a narrative, that's a story. Um, song lyrics are words, they create stories. And in this section, it's that corny song that he hears on WLNG. And um, here's a quote at the beginning about it. I saw it clearly. I thought it had been the kiss that the song retrieved, but it was this place. Certain songs got you like that. You can make fun of them, ignore them, try to tune them out, but the verses still got inside. People you'd never met, meet offered the words you were unable to shove past your lips, saying what you felt. They spoke for you. 
That's my favorite thing about songs. Talking about the summer all the time, sometimes I have to stop and say, I don't know who this Benji kid is either. Certainly, he would not recognize the man he came to be. The poor sap. I need him to figure out how I got where I am, and he needs me to reassure him that despite all he knows and has been and feels, there is more. I can listen to him, but of course, he can't hear a damn thing, I say. And so he wishes he could instruct the younger Benji um, in life, but of course he can't. Dissolving families, hear about the usual fight. This time he does something different, though he leaves the house. This is what his sister tells him, Elena. And he's kind of surprised by it. I'm not so surprised as a reader. You probably aren't either. And then here's what he says about that memory he has. And then he realizes that memory is not true. It was never perfect. Collective over the individual. Um, he's talking about as a group trying to get into Bayside and um, how when one failed, they all failed. I don't know, that might've been in chapter six. Um, here's also from the concert. Oh, I think that might be chapter six. These above, but here's one from this last reading. Sometimes you recognize yourself and other people right off and sometimes it's subconscious. When you get older, you gather friends and lovers for reasons other than the accident that your houses are close together. There's an affinity, stuff you share in common and things you seek out in other people. Something drew you together, but you didn't understand that secret undertow until one day after years and years of talking, it comes, the key story that lays it all out. Who could know at the start of that innocent evening that this was the night to make it plain? They tell you what happened and you think, we're more alike than I knew. But of course you did know, it's what brought you together. I love that idea that um, as a collective, um, we are working to understand ourselves more and we don't even realize it until we start making those um, deeper connections with people. Um, how about for some um, narrative voice aspects? Here's some good ones in the last chapter. Um, informal, nostalgic, direct address to the audience. He says, I see I'm going way back with you today. So he says, you, speaking directly to us, the reader. I know the movie didn't come out until three long summers later, but what do you want? <laughs> and then he's, that's where he's talking about Die Hard. And so he's like, he's directly reference, you know, he's directly addressing the reader saying, hey, give me a break here. I, ca I can't be entirely historically accurate. Um, here's some explicit foreshadowing on 278. Although, right, there was that afternoon of foreshadowing. And he's talking about Melanie calling. Um, Melanie calls Benji Ben, right? Finally, finally he gets someone to call him by the name he wants to go by. And she seems to understand why he wants to go by Ben instead of Benji. Um, let's see, I think the other ones, I think that's all I've got for these. Let me quick show you the um, discussion questions and you can answer one or more of these at your leisure. Um, I say we meet Elena finally. What do you make of her? What kind of a big sister role model is she for Benji? A lot of new things happen for Benji in these last two chapters. List them. What do you make of the Melanie fling? What is Benji's point about the corny song from WLNG and the memories it brings? What do you make of Barry David? What is his significance? And I do have a quote down here about him. He's the ghost kid who is all of us and none, everybody's cousin and no one's, and how they should have stopped him, but it was hard to resi resist the pleasure of watching someone F up so colossally. Um, who does Benji see himself in at the Labor Day party? And in the end, is Benji correct in saying a lot has happened over the summer? And finally, what do you make of the last line of the book? Take a look at it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this book. Um, I know it, it, it's, you know, it's, I like how youthful it is, how honest it is, how irreverent and sassy it is. And I hope that you enjoyed that about it as well. It's also pretty gosh darn profound too when you start thinking about it.